In this video, we describe how to make a buffer solution with a specific pH. Remember that a buffer solution is that in which uh, the small addition of base or acid doesn't change much the pH and is generally made by uh, mixing a weak acid with uh, its conjugate base or a weak base with its conjugate acid. All right, uh, the way that we're going to describe how to make buffers with a specific pH is via use of the henderson hasselbalch equation, which relates the pH of the solution with the pK sub A uh, if you have a weak acid with conjugate base buffer. All right, so this is the henderson hasselbalch equation, the pH of that solution is equal to the pK sub A of the acid plus the base the logarithm of the concentration of the conjugate base over the concentration of the conjugate of the weak acid. Okay? So then the idea would be to uh, yes, uh, set a pH, say, of uh, 5, and then see how we would make a, a buffer solution at that pH with uh, a known uh, weak acid uh, conjugate base pair. Okay, so for example, uh, known weak acids with conjugate uh, base pairs buffers, uh, the pKa of the system would be 3.14, uh, but if you use uh, acetic acid and acetate, you have a pK sub A of 4.74, and then uh, there's many more buffers, but we can write uh, one more, and this is going to be the hydrogen phosphate, dihydrogen phosphate, hydrogen phosphate buffer which is the second equilibrium in the phosphoric acid dissociation and the pK sub A of this particular acid process happens to be 7.20. Right, so again, the, the pK sub A of, of these uh, 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 weak acid ba conjugate base pairs is very specific, right? So the question is, well, what happens if you want to uh, buffer at a pH which is not exactly uh, the pK sub A of that pair? Well, it turns out that you still have some flexibility in your buffering abilities. You can uh, uh, choose a solution that is quite close to your ta uh, target pH, and then uh, modify a little bit the concentrations of weak acid and conjugate base to get to the target pH that you want. Okay? Now, uh, ideally, a buffer should have identical amounts or concentrations of the weak acid and the conjugate base, and that's what gives you the most buffering ability. However, uh, uh, to be able to uh, tune a little bit the pH of the solution, uh, you can uh, get out of that equivalency between the concentrations of the weak acid and the conjugate base and add an excess of, of weak acid or conjugate base to again fine-tune what that pH is. You will still get buffering ability if you're not very far away from, again, equal concentrations of um, uh, weak acid and base. However, you can't go very far away though. Uh, so, uh, because otherwise you will not have a buffer, right? So to have an effective buffer, we're going to consider that uh, uh, the pH that you should be targeting should be within one unit of the pK sub A, right? So you can still make buffers uh, uh, by changing the, the concentration of conjugate uh, base or weak acid, okay, such that uh, the uh, resulting pH is within one unit of the pKa of that pair. Okay, and again, this will, this will give you uh, uh, some, uh, some buffering abilities, but of course the largest buffering ability is when the concentrations of uh, the weak acid and the conjugate base are uh, about equal, and that means that the pH is equal to the pK sub A. All right, great, so let's, come up, the, uh, let's come, come up with a problem here to illustrate exactly how uh, this methodology could work. All right, so we're going to try to uh, come up with half liter of a buffer solution at pH is equal to 5. Right? And uh, we have only two ingredients. One of them is a stock solution of uh, acetic acid, 0.2 molar. Okay, so we have acetic acid, 0.2 molar. And then we also have uh, the conjugate base, which is acetate, as solid sodium acetate. So this will be a powder. Okay. Uh, so the question then is, how do we mix this uh, stock solution of uh, acetic acid and how much solid sodium acetate we have to add to that in order to be able to get a buffer at pH 5? Okay, right, so notice that uh, uh, if you were to mix the uh, acetic acid and acetate in equal amounts, 
right? What that would mean is that those concentrations would be exactly the same, and then the pH is equal to the pK sub A. But the pK sub A is 4.74, and that is not what we want. We want pH 5, right? So we're going to have to alter these concentrations of uh, conjugate base and weak acid so that we, wait to, uh, so that we get to where we want. Notice that the, P, the target pH is a little bit more basic than the nominal pH uh, that you get from the, P, uh, from the PK sub A. So what that means is that you're actually going to have to add a little bit more of uh, the conjugate base than you have of the weak acid at the equilibrium. Okay? Uh, so let's actually then go through the numbers and see how that would work. And if we uh, involve here the uh, henderson hasselbalch equation, what we would say is that uh, your target pH 5.00 is going to be equal to the pK sub A, which is 4.74, plus the base of logarithm of the concentration of acetate over the concentration of acetic acid. Okay. Well, uh, we can combine this uh, to show that then this is going to be equal to uh, 0 0.26. And then taking the anti-logarithm of uh, both sides of the expression, you will get that uh, 1.82 is equal to the ratio of the concentration of acetate at equilibrium over the concentration of acetic acid at equilibrium. Okay. All right, so that actually uh, uh, gives you uh, the, um, the right ratio of the conjugate base and the weak acid. Okay. Now, uh, notice that uh, it's actually much easier to work with moles uh, than with concentrations because we actually have a solid uh, sodium acetate, right? So uh, here what you would, be, you would be doing is weighing some amount uh, of sodium acetate and then adding it to the solution, right, to get, to get a given concentration. Right, so it's much easier to work with moles because, again, that is uh, more directly related to mass. Okay? Notice that uh, concentrations are just mole over volume, and because both of the conjugate acid and the weak acid, the conjugate base and the weak acid, are in the same volume, uh, then this ratio is exactly identical to the number of moles of each. Right? That would be exactly the same because the volume for uh, both is exactly the same. Right? So we get to the fact that um, uh, the ratio of moles of the conjugate base and the weak acid has to be equal to 1.82. Right, so the question is, well, how, how do we do this? Well, one thing that we can do is then, uh, because we need a volume of half liter, we can just take a half liter of this solution of acetic acid, and that is going to give us some moles of acetic acid. If we know the moles of acetic acid, then we can solve for the moles of the conjugate base and then find the mass of conjugate base that you need to add in order to be able to do this, right? So, all right, again, because we need a uh, half liter, okay, then uh, this is going to be equal to 0 0.5 liters times 0 0.200 uh, mole, per liter, mole per liter, that is your acetic acid number of moles, okay? And this is going to be equal to uh, the number of moles of the conjugate base. Well, when you go through the algebra and solve for that uh, number of moles of the conjugate base, this is going to be equal to 0 0.18 mole okay, of Na OLAC. All right, now uh, uh, getting to the mass from the moles is trivial. This is just, uh, these things are related just by the molar mass. Remember that if you get 0 0.18 uh, grams per mole, sorry, grams of sodium, 0 0.18 moles, of uh, sodium acetate that you need to add multiplied by the molar mass uh, of sodium acetate, which is 82.03. This is grams of sodium acetate for each mole of sodium acetate. You get right away the number of grams of sodium acetate that you need to add to that solution. Okay? And this happens to be 15 grams of sodium acetate. Right, so this is how you're going to do the solution then. Uh, what you will do is take half liter of uh, the weak acid solution, acetic acid 0.2 molar, okay, and to that you're going to add 15 grams of solid sodium acetate. What we're hoping there is that the volume doesn't change dramatically so that you still have uh, about half a liter at the, end, at the end of the process. Okay? According to the henderson uh, hasselbach equation, uh, what that would mean is that the pH of that solution will be equal to 5, which is exactly the choice pH that, that you had for this particular problem. Okay, so to summarize, 
What we've done in this problem is a little bit of buffer, buffer engineering. What we've done is, is seen how we can manipulate uh, the amounts that we add of a weak acetate or a conjugate base so that uh, we can get to a target pH that might be interesting for any given application.